Hello, Ruben in Mancelona, Michigan. See more better with freeprescriptionlenses.com. And before I begin to cut uh, Crizal Alize lenses for your Oakley 5137 cartridge, let me explain that I am an authorized Oakley dealer, but I am not allowed to put the individual frames and prices on the website. That is only reserved for the big boys out there, and I'm just a little tiny independent David competing with corporate Goliaths. So that's how we have to do things, play by the rules. But again, I just charge Oakley's MSRP. The manufacturer suggests a retail price, and you get free prescription lenses with the purchase of any frame. But again, this is the Oakley 5137, color 01, which is the satin black. And of course, this goes by the name Cartridge. So let me go ahead and take everything out of the original packaging that Oakley sends to me. Oh, come on out. Come on out, you. There we go. Your hard shell Oakley case. Inside is the cleaning cloth that doubles as a carrying bag if you don't want to carry the hard case. And the star of the show, the main attraction. Of course, it comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping. And I'm going to include that when I ship to you. And this is the Oakley 5137 color 01 in the 54 eye size the satin black with the chrome oakley logo on the temple this is the titanium frame so let's begin i'm going to go ahead and program the shape into the computer you are secret agent 1032 so years from now should you ever need new lenses for this frame i can mail them right to your home take out the original demo lenses put that in there and hit start a little stylus is going to pop up and go around and trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com, where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine, authentic Oakley frame and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase, whether they are prescription or not. Ruben, you know you need prescription, and he needs these for a wedding he's going to next month. So, Ruben, hook me up with a selfie from uh, from the wedding. I know you'll be dressed up nice. Or not. There's some cool weddings out there where people don't dress up anymore. I didn't even dress up for mine. That's right, I'm talking about you, honey. Okay, so, your pupillary distance is 63, so divided by 2... That's 31.5. The computer starts at 32.5, so I'm going to hit the minus button two times, bring it down there. I want to raise the optical center up to about 19. I'm going to go up two millimeters. Let me mark that down. Two above at 19. And now we can go ahead and get your lenses prepped. First, by putting ink into the... Well, let's make sure everything clear off the dried crud from off there. Okay. Put some more ink down there. Come on, Higgy, baby. Give me some ink. Raise that back up. Your prescription is minus 1, minus 50 at 126. Well, I guess we have to turn things on. Let's zero it out. Everything's where it's supposed to be. Minus 1, minus 50 at 126. Let's put the axis wheel at 126. Put the power drum on minus 1. Then find the minus one, minus 50. There it is, the one on top. I had a 50-50 chance of getting it right. Take it out of the protective packet. Comes with a laminate on the front of the lens to protect the lens during shipping so nothing rubs against the front surface of the lens. Put it in there. Rotate into the spherical component. The minus one component of your prescription comes into view. Check your astigmatism correction. That lines up well. And then we're going to put three dots on your lenses. And we're going to label this one right. R for right. And then the left lens is minus 1, minus 75 at 70. Minus 1, minus 75 at 70. Put that right there. Take the lens out of the protective sleeve. Pull the laminate off. Make sure the we're still on the minus 1. Yep. Check your astigmatism correction. That looks good. Put three dots on your lenses. And we're going to label this L, which is Latin, for not right. 
Oh, and if you guys missed any of that, let me recap. I almost missed that. I almost missed that. So this is a block, or by now you know I like to call them Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. So I need two double-sided adhesive stickers, of which I've got a couple right here. The black side is the sticky side. Line that one up on the first one. Do the same thing now for the second one. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. On the back is a silver button that is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice today. The first time it's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the arm. So it stays in place. And the reason why I put those dots on your lens is it tells me that it's oriented and they're just right. So the blue cross is the geometric center of the frame. Your eye is just above that in inset. You see the orange crosshairs. Hopefully that comes into view. Get everything lined up there. And hit the button. The arm's going to come down and place the block onto the right lens. We're going to do the same thing now for the unright lens. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. Line up the magnet. Grab the left lens. Same pupillary distance, same optical center height. Get it. Same procedure, getting the dots lined up just right. Hit the button, then the arm comes down and places the block onto the left lens. Now this is the edger. This is what's going to do all the work while I run my mouth. It costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out, buy their own, put it on your kitchen counter, then you can cut your own lenses at home. You won't need this guy with the two thumbs and bad jokes to do it for you. The actual cutting wheel is over here on the far left. It's, gonna, it's a diamond crested wheel that's going to grind away your lens material until it's the final size. This wheel in the center, that channel, that little valley, that's where it's going to put the V-shaped bevel onto the lens to stay inside the bevel of the frame. Want to wake up the computer? You are number 1032. 1032. These are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, high-index plastic, or Trivex, I would select that, but we're going to stay with that. I'm not going to polish the edge of the lens because it's not going to be seen in this frame anyway. I'm not going to put a safety bevel where I smooth out the front surface of the lens because it's not going to protrude from the frame. But I will put one on the back even though very little, if any, will protrude from the back surface of the frame. But I'll show you why I do it anyway as we continue. I'm going to hit the... Before I hit the green arrow, I've got to put the lens in there. Now the magnet is going to do its job a second time today. It's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the chuck, or as I like to call it. Sir Charles, because I don't know this machine well enough to call it Chuck. Okay, waking up with some bad jokes. Now I'll hit the green button, the door closes, the clamp shuts, and then the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame. And you can see is this tracing the shape of the right lens. And then the old carpenter saying measure twice, cut once. It's measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing, which I doubt you'll have in this frame anyway. But it's just a standard procedure, and I do cut very strong prescriptions all day long for free, and that does become a little bit more critical, but not so much with this frame. Now, you see light flickering in the background. There's water there to catch the optical sawdust that will begin to come off the lens as it touches down onto the cutting wheel. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry where plastic high-index plastic and private lenses cut wet. Water will spray onto the lens for the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle to wash away any optical debris that you may see beginning to form on the edge of the lens. But your lenses are polycarbonate. These are the Essilor brand of transition lenses. Essilor calls polycarbonate air wear because they feel they're as light as air. And you also upgraded to the Crizal Alize. The AS stands for aspheric. Aspheric simply means not spherical. A spherical lens is completely round in every direction. So these are thinner and lighter. And then the front surface is flatter to fit in today's flatter curvature frames. I do want to also mark the lens packets that you'll be getting. Your minus one, minus 50. Minus one, minus 50. And again, the airwear with Crizal Alize. When you get these, you'll see this ink in my handwriting. This is the right lens. Let's do the same thing for the left. Minus 1, minus 75. Minus 1, minus 75 in the Crizal Alize. And this is the left lens. So you'll be getting all this to know you're getting the manufacturer's original package to verify that uh, you're getting the real deal. So, let's put all this stuff back. Now, polycarbonate lenses are 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They're also virtually unbreakable. They're high-impact ballistics-grade lenses. The 
same type of lens material our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from flying shrapnel and debris. They also have 100% UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes, unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun there in Mansalona, Michigan. This is permanent, never needs to be reapplied. So now the safety bevel is being applied to the back surface of the lens. Essentially it's like a fine grit sandpaper just to smooth out any rough surfaces that are left over from the cutting procedure. In just a moment I will open this door with my mind. I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I can. I just got to stare at it for a couple hours, but then it'll melt. So I just want to dry the lens off so it's not slippery. Run my thumbnail around to make sure all the schwarf, which is optical sawdust, has been removed from the lens. I'm going to take my Phillips head screwdriver, which is right here, do a little bit of lefty loosey. Hopefully, not removing the screw all the way. I may have to tuck the lens in at the outside corner first, push down at the nose, and it snaps right in. So now I want to, you can do that with the unbreakable polycarbonate, but the other reason that I put the safety bevel on the back surface of the lens is that as I push it in, I do not want it to mar the frame in any way and keep everything pristine. So let's go ahead and start cutting the left lens, flip that over to L, press that on there firmly. Attach the magnet to the Charles, the Chucky, the Chuckster, the Chucky baby, Sir Chuckarama. Hit the green arrow which is start in every language. The door closes, the clamp shuts, and just like before, it'll trace the shape of the left side of the frame, making sure the lens is large enough to fit. You can see as it's going around tracing the shape. Dun, 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 dun. And just like before, measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly where to place the bevel. So you have the least amount of edge thickness showing, look at that, none whatsoever. And that's why I use the polycarbonate lenses, because you just get the better results. I can do high index when, when needed, but pop that off, dry that off with my hand, pull the sticker off, add it to my collection. It is growing, it is growing. We're going to come back down here to the lensometer, rotate the axis wheel back to 126. Put the lens in. Oh, the black dot is gone. I'll have to put a new one there. Find the optical center. There we go. Check the power of lens, which is minus one. That's because the unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter, spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R, starting at zero and going up in quarter increments, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, one. You've got three of them represented here. You have four steps of far-sighted correction. You are near-sighted with your glasses off. You can see up close, great. But you have trouble the farther away something is. So that's why your lens minifies. It shrinks things down to the actual size they really are. And once everything is the correct size, you have two steps of astigmatism correction, which let's check for that. And we're at minus 150, exactly halfway between one and two. Now, uncorrected astigmatism make sixes and eights look alike or the letters p or f you have two curves on your eye a spherical curve this way and the astigmatic curve this one it's how you line up those two curves to make everything nice and crisp and we're going to line that up with the 126 meridian a straight line at zero to 180 with 90 in the center starting at zero we're going to go past the 90 and go to 126. now your left eye is you still need the same amount of correction four steps you're on the fourth rung of the ladder for far-sighted correction, but you have three steps of astigmatism correction there. So we're gonna end up with a final value of 175 because you add two like signs together. And we're gonna turn that fine two knob to 70, just shy of the, which is actually kind of cool. You are 36 degrees away from the vertical meridian this way, 20 degrees this way. I just find that unique. Now again, this is the Oakley 5137 cartridge. Um, and the 54 eye size color 01, which is the satin black with the chrome logo on the side. And oh, I need to put a dot on there while it is still there. Get everything lined up. Let's see if I just push down on that center dot. And we did. Let me darken that. Okay. So, 
Where are we at on the left lines? It's getting the safety bevel. Water's running on to tell me it's the end of the cycle, so in just a moment the door will open. Ruben, I want you to open the door with your mind this time. Pretty good, Ruben, on short notice, too. That's pretty good. First day on the job and you're doing everything like a pro. You must have stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Clean everything off. Clean that off with my hands. I love ink on my hands. So let's go ahead and loosen that screw. Lefty Lucy. We're going to tuck the lens in and the outside corner. Press down at the nose. Have it snap right in. Come on, Snappy. Come on, Snappy. Am I not doing this right? There we go. There we go. Tighten that down righty tighty. Take the block off. Use my hand approved drawing method. Throw that back in there. Pull the sticker off. At least that black dot stayed this time. We're going to put it in. We are going to turn the axis wheel to 70. Verify doing a final inspection on the lens. Check the power and I don't even have to move anything. It's still at minus one. Let's check your second curvature and we're at minus 175, one tick mark away from two. So I couldn't have done any better if I'd cut these lenses myself. Your pupillary distance is 63. I'm going to turn the card around and we place, where's my PD? Come on, PD stick. Come on, PD stick. What I do with you? Line it up on that dot, hold it up over here and we're getting 63. So that is cut perfectly. Now this is the portion in every video that as I clean your lenses, I mentioned to you that everyone there's free shipping anywhere in the U.S. and Mancelona, Michigan is still in the U.S. So, but when you get these in the mail, there is a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there is an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them but I'll get them in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them down on the counter and press down, there is no wobble. Close each temple, press down, there is no wobble. Make sure the tension on each spring hinge is good and that uh, everything is good. The cool thing about this frame, this barrel, there are no screws in the temple. That is a true, very unique barrel, and it also doubles as the spring hinge, but Oakley very nice design there but I also include instructions well I mentioned the selfie request but I also include instructions on how not only care for your frame and lenses so they will last you for years but for your case your Oakley cleaning cloth your Crizal cleaning cloth that you'll be getting and the premium microfiber cleaning cloth that I provide so those two will last you for years and let me just clean everything off real quickly that's looking good so if you like what you've seen, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can, you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram is freeprescriptionlenses.com. On Twitter, it's freerxlenses. If you have any questions, you can email me directly at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. So, Ruben in Mancelona, Michigan, I hope you enjoyed watching as I cut Crizal Alizé lenses for your Oakley 5137 cartridge, the color 01, the satin black with the chrome emblem and the 54 eye size. And everyone else has got a chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.